Hello, friends. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, I was out last week running from the hurricane down in Florida. Um, everybody's safe. We all made it out just fine. But um, we're back this week, and there will be a lot of interesting things happening this week. We'll see the purchasing managers' indexes getting released. We'll be able to see the outlook for producers on the supply side and you know whether those trajectories are depreciating or if we're going to see supply chain issues improving in the near future i don't think that's going to be the case but nonetheless we have a lot of things to just kind of get into the last time we were all together we talked about the impending global collapse and i just i must say i think it's much worse than what anyone is expecting. So we talked a lot about the conditions that are facilitating these outcomes and facilitating very specific trajectories in terms of the global markets. And there's a lot of factors, there's a lot of events, conditions that are all happening simultaneously to create a very a very unique set of circumstances that the markets haven't experienced in this way. So we talked about Russia, right? All of the sanctions that we've placed, we have blocked their largest payment processor, SWIFT. That's definitely having an impact on their economy. And China is in the midst of their own real estate crisis, and they're still experiencing major supply shocks and supply shortages because of their zero COVID policy when as soon as there's an uptick in cases, the shutdowns start, right? The shutdowns begin. And there's just a lot of tensions that we're seeing in, in China and Taiwan, not really knowing are they going to decide to make a move on Taiwan? You know, the whole world is watching Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping because there's a certain uncertainty that follows communist rule, um, authoritarian rule. We don't really know for sure how this is going to play out because back in December, China defaulted on about $300 billion of debt uh, in the Evergrande crisis, it's their largest real estate developer. And real estate markets year to date in China are down 87%. Um, and that's not even taking into account the social ongoing geopolitical issues that they have within their country. So there's a lot of unique events that are happening simultaneously. All of Europe is is experiencing an energy crisis. We've seen pipelines shut off. We've seen natural gas being withheld by Russia from all of Europe. And here in the States, we're experiencing a lot of interest rate hikes. Um, what I think a lot of people fail to realize is how much of an impact those rate hikes have on the entire global economy. We'll see how strong the US dollar is right now relative to all other global currencies. And that's for a lot of reasons. You know, debt is more expensive. We've talked a bit about this. With every rate hike, we're going to see, you know, you're going to see your debt get more expensive. You're going to see your car payments increase. You're going to be paying more in interest for, for that, for your credit cards. Any form of debt um, is getting more expensive. But what a lot of people don't really realize is that for banks, the banking industry, you know, with these rate hikes, why aren't the banking sectors performing as well as you would think they would during an inflationary period when the Federal Reserve is passing uh, contractionary monetary policy and really going in on tapering, why aren't we seeing the banking sector reflecting those increased rates? Why aren't we seeing them reflect um, in the share prices? Well, a couple of reasons. So when interest rates go up, 
you know, they go up across the board, right? So the federal funds rate, that is the rate at which banks borrow from each other, their interest rates to take loans from each other. We also see that increase. So we're seeing debt on every level get more expensive. And what happens to major banks is collapse when they're not able to meet those loan requirements, when they're over leveraged, when they're, um, you know, they're not able to pay the debt because the rates are, are too high. So the U.S. dollar is extremely strong right now because the world's debt is paid in USD. So the whole world's debt is getting more expensive right now. And we've seen some interesting, we've seen some interesting things coming from the Deutsche Bank and the Credit Suisse um, conglomerates in Europe. So I'm looking at another screen here trying to compile my thoughts, but it, it it's looking like the rest of the world is begging the Federal Reserve to stop raising rates. Now, it'll be interesting to see if this happens. So we've talked a lot about what's going to happen to our real estate market, what's going to happen to the global economy if we stay on the trajectory that we're on, right? So if we get to a point after the election when I think uh, all of the bottoms are going to fall out of the market, if we get past the election and their credit so easy or the Deutsche Bank have to file for bankruptcy or continue to, you know, put pressure on the Federal Reserve, we are not going to be able to sustain our debt with the interest rates increasing, we're going to have the subprime crisis. We're going to have another financial crisis. We're going to have the great run on the banks. We're going to have a series of declining conditions that's going to cause a global recession. Okay. I found this on the web for a series of declining. Check it out. Sorry, my other, my other computer is talking to me. Um, so anyways, we're going to we're going to see a series of events that are going to continue to decline the the global standing. So the US dollar is very strong relative to other currencies, which is it seems like it would be a good thing for us, but in the long term because of the crippling impacts of the interest rate hikes for all of the other countries in the world their debt is becoming unsustainable to manage. And with the strength of the dollar just increasing and their own currencies being devalued, um, there's a very negative inverse relationship there. But aside from the strength of the US dollar and their index, what, what we're seeing is just again those those brewing the brewing of the perfect conditions right so all of the debt is getting more expensive we're seeing banks begging the fed to stop raising rates will they stop raising rates i don't know right they've come out multiple times there's been so much account of j powell telling us that he's not going to raise um he's not going to stop raising rates until inflation is combated uh, to an acceptable level. However, there could be a divergence, right? If we start seeing countries in famine, uh, even more so, if we start seeing, you know, riots in the streets, this is already happening in Europe because they are not able to afford their energy at the moment. But there's so many conditions brewing for a global recession. And it'll be interesting to note that historically, right before every financial collapse, the US dollar hit peak levels in the index. So that's very interesting to note. I'll definitely drop some resources in terms of how you can understand, you know, why the dollar index is relative to all of our geopolitical 
relations and connections amongst the world. So next we'll talk a little bit about, in theory, if the Fed stops with the rate hikes. So we're just starting to see the impacts of the rate hikes. Um, interest rate hikes have very delayed impacts on the economy, and you don't see them unfold for at least six to eight quarters. So we're going to be, even if the Fed does stop raising rates, we're still going to be seeing and experiencing the impacts of inflation and the responses to inflation through interest rate hikes well into 2023, well into. So just my two cents about where, where we're going, the conditions that are brewing all at the same time to create a very unique a unique set of circumstances that the financial markets have not really experienced up until now. So it'll be very interesting to see if the United States does decide to stop the rate hikes, continue to artificially hold up the markets with over leveraged and risky trading and just assume that the government you know, we'll bail them out because they're too big to fail. So it'll be, it'll just be super interesting to see how it unfolds, how the geopolitical tensions, the crisis in China with their real estate markets, Russia and their own economic collapse and our growing inflation and impact on our rate hikes in, in the global economy. So I don't know what's going to happen. I'm uh, I'm here to observe and share my my observations with you all. We we encourage evolution of thought here, right? So it's important to note that you'll never be able to time the market perfectly because the conditions of the market are always changing. The conditions that facilitate circumstances are always changing. So when the conditions change, when the market conditions change, the thesis changes, the approaches, the strategies change, and the overall trajectory can also change. So if we continue on the path that we are on, I do believe there's going to be a global recession because the big banks will not be able to sustain their over leveraged balance books. However, if we return back to an economy of quantitative easing, easing off on rate hikes, we'll see some bull runs in the short term. We'll definitely see, we'll see some market rallying, but we'll only be delaying an inevitable global market crash at that point because we will continue to fuel inflation with low rates and and inflation will continue to outpace your wage growth and unemployment numbers are going to keep going up following a hyperinflationary economy if we don't keep raising rates. So the conditions are always going to be changing and the conditions are always going to impact the trajectory of the markets and the sentiment of the markets. What, what is the market afraid of right now? Um, too many things to count. So this week we have some important dates. Um, you'll want to, you'll want to pay close attention to the purchasing managers index. That's going to give us a good picture of the global supply chain and where we stand. Um, it's hovering right now at about 51.5 and historically if that index of the purchasing managers index falls below 50, that usually signals that the producer side, the supply side conditions are deteriorating, which is not a good thing for the global economy, right? That's when your supply is diminishing um, and your demand is diminishing at the same time. That's, it's just not a good situation to be in. However, 
pay close attention. I think we have the purchasing managers index coming out for this last month on Wednesday, October 5th. That might be, yeah, tomorrow, the 5th or the 6th is when we'll, we'll see the purchasing managers index reports released. But it'll just be super interesting to see <laughs> how it all unfolds. You guys, we're here to just keep track of the markets and observe and, and make decisions based on those observations. So I'll be back with some updates and about what I'll be doing in my strategies probably in the next couple of days or so. But until next time,